engines. Welcome to the 1969 Talladega 500. As, as you see, we're in the 03 Richard Brickhouse car, but you would see that he actually drove the 99 in this race. And you're probably wondering why is there so many cars? Well, you can't ha mix the Grand American Series cars and uh, Grand National cars together. So why I did instead was add the real life cars that would have raced uh, with the cars that did not or was not documented withdrawing or anything else. I only did really the only thing I changed is driver change cars, and that's it. But uh, the ones that don't list, which is going to be on the screen, hopefully, if I remember to do that. As you see there, from I believe it was the 99 when the 99 car. Uh, driver swap. Green flag, green flag, green, green, green. Up to the, I think it was the 04. Those cars will be, uh, will be here because it isn't classified if they withdrawed or not, or they just didn't start. Which I believe they might have just withdrawn or just Car left inside. without saying that they left. Clear inside. Because they might fall under the category of not started. Um, we are with 57 laps here. In real life, it would have been 188, by the way, obviously. Um, they told it would have been 200 laps so and 60 laps. And then Car there's 60 laps in my uh, count, 30% uh, of race, and 30% of 188, I believe, was around 57. So, so as we wait behind. Don Tarr and his number 37 car, as the USEC season's been doing alright. It's not like I've been, I'm gonna win the championship, but it's alright. Jesus guys, come on now. The two Chevys in front of us screwing us up here. I know it's a small field, but I didn't want to fill in every, all the cars over the race. I just wanted to fill in the cars I know. No, 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 that they raced and the cars that weren't classified as withdrawing, so it's still kind of realism, still kind of there. Also, obviously, I can't get the wing warriors with the uh, non wing warriors, but uh, uh, for the Dodge and Plymouth, but uh, there was. There is a mod that I use for the new sex season where you can have no wing and wing cars, but no one's made a set where both cars are existent. Because there is a set for a short track, but it, over it overwrites the super speedway cars, so you can't have a non wing or a car set with the non wing and the wing. I don't want to do with all that mess trying to figure that out. Also, just because I. We don't, we don't have every single 1969 car there too that would have raced in this race. So there's not a lot of 1970 cars in the first place for that set. So I'd rather not mess with it. That checkup really screwed us up there. Next checkup, I'm just going to take the outside and go with it. So I'm guessing we're going to at least have to pit twice. The way it's looking might be more, but uh, who knows. Car in oh, luckily I just decided to lift Clear. just a little bit. Probably Car helped us get around there. See Bob Ashbrook in the uh, 44 car there. Someone 
engine just expired. It was a 15 car, and there was a crash behind this. But I don't think the car is going to come out. That may might as well actually screw us unless we can get to the 70 car of uh, JD McDuffie as quickly as possible. Because I'm surprised there hasn't been a caution for yet that yet. Tires are looking good, so we're not going to put the tires. We only 
if the tires are fit under caution, or if uh, we're burning up that tire really bad. So we're gonna come around and get left over by this lap we're actually we're gonna hit though. So we're not gonna actually complete the lap eleven under pace. We're gonna come in the average got to come outside. Clear. I can't just wait for the pack because I don't go know over if I'm actually going to be able to beat them. Keep it under 5,000 in second. Looks like we're running low on fuel. Yes. If that fuel pressure gauge starts to drop, come on in. See a uh, Remo stock coming in as well. Go, go, go! Don't go See, over seven. He, he, he might have an issue with his tires, and that's why he only came in because he probably needed left sides. Watch for that a tire speed issue. now. Keep it on five thousand in second. The leader's pitting He's now. He's holding on. I think that went by. Okay, you're clear of pit lane. And the car just blew up out of nowhere, and there was no Looks issue. Looks like we lost that motor. Are we really doing this now? The yellow flag is out. Let's go. Race back to the line. <sighs> okay, we're under caution. Catch up to the end of the pacing line. And the car is just gonna blow up like that for no reason. It wasn't even down the 250. All the pressure, or oil the temp wasn't even car. doing anything. Oil pressure was not doing anything either. Of course, fuel pressure is gonna be going because this car is not even on. So apparently, we had a camshaft failure. Richard Brickhouse, or not Richard Brickhouse, uh, Raymond Stott had a uh, valve issue. Trivet had a gearbox issue. Um, Kaisen, Kaisenhausen, or Kaisen Hiller had a camshaft, like I had, failure, and the 15 of Ed Hassard had a header problem, as there goes Ty and Lund out to the lead, Bobby Isaac right behind them, as he was one of the three really main competitors of this race, as where is Jim Bandler right now? He's in 12. Okay, I see the car now. I, as Bobby Isaac takes the lead from Tiny Lun. So I need to check something. Okay, right, I'm gonna go back here to see. There is Jim Vandenberg. And then there's Richard Brookhouse on num number 99. As two leaders there of Bobby Isaac and Tiny Lun. Go out to pretty decent sized lead, but that's probably because of the lot car. Of, uh, I think I was pulling halt and I was holding him up. Earl Brooks trying to get around that 23 car, but I think Jane Duffy might be a little low on power too. Um, who else we got here? You got Dick Brooks there in the 32. Who? <laughs> Probably only joined the race just so that he had his better chances at getting the Rookie of the Year, which is probably a good choice there. As Richard Brickhouse is still trying to get around Homer Newland. I believe it was Newland, I can be sure. And then you got John Sears, who in this race I believe would have driven a, a Chevy actually. And he got driver swapped with someone else. 
Here's the lockdown car of Halt, and then you got Ben Arnold, and then the rest of the field here. Is Ash fucking Henley actually caught up to the two leaders here? Is Isaac still a lead, so? As you see on the layer war, Richard Burkhouse dropped out of the piston, so he can't win the race that he won in real life. But right now the battle is uh, Bobby Isaac, Tiny Lund, and Gray Henley uh, being held up by Polding Halt. But uh, the other two pitted while Isaac's going to lead another lap here. As Holt is just holding up Isaac for no reason. Holt needs to just get out of the way. And now we got cars coming out of the pit lane. You see Dave Marcus. The A car there. There comes Bobby Isaac to his pits, as he's gonna pit. Here's Jim Vandenberg in the three. Ashbrook, Elmore Langley. And then your R2 leaders, Tiny Lynn Henley. As they just got a pit lane, Tiny Lynn with a massive lead on Henley. Then you got the S70 of JD with Duffy. Oh, and the A car has blown up. As the 32 and 87 are in the lane, hopefully the A car doesn't just park it on the racetrack. As Dick Brooks and Buck Baker take the lead here and on lap 39 here of the Talladega 500. The first annual Talladega 500, you got Errol, Ro Errol Brooks there, the 26 car, who we've also joined in this race, probably for points. As those two pits, it's going to give it back to Isaac. Yep, it's going to give it back to Isaac as he comes out of the pit lane right in front of Tiny Lund. Let's see if Tiny Lund can get around Isaac here. He's definitely faster, but I don't think he's going to be able to get, or be fast enough to actually get around. Nor be smart enough the way the AI are. If you go high, you probably got a chance, but he's gonna stay low with Isaac. He's gonna move to the inside. Is Isaac gonna leave and be? Nope, he's gonna shut the door on him through the tribal. I'm gonna come up to lap 40. And yeah, it looks like the A car got off the racetrack. That's good, because now we don't have to care about a yellow flag. There comes Dick Brooks and Buck Baker out of the pit lane. You see Jim Vandenberg, Gray Henley, um, Emma Langley, and Jenny Duffy. A little bit out of draft there, though. As we still got two remaining drivers from that three car, pretty much three car battle of real life. With Isaac leading all of them. Now Tiny Lund takes the lead off of four. And then you got Jim Vandenberg there in fourth, trying to get around this lap car as Polding Hall is just going to completely block the field and he's almost going to turn himself get out of the way man no wonder you flipped that orange speedway and you got Ben Arnold, this ain't going to go well Ooh, actually he was slow enough to actually not cause anything, I thought the caution was out because of that but they were just slow as they're still battling for the lead, Jesus. So we're off of a restart. All the lap cars were able to get in front of Bobby Isaac, which is going to actually screw him. Because now here comes Jim Vandiver, and there's Homer, New Homer Newline, and here comes Emma Langley, Hannah Sillington, James Thomas, Dave Marcus, and all of those guys behind them. As there's only 15 cars remaining on the racetrack out of the 26 that actually started out, that was 25, sorry. 
as three of them are a lot down and only 12 of them right now are in a lead lap, but I think there goes no, it's uh, it's gonna be two laps down for Jay McDuffie. He needs to lap Errol Brooks and Ashbrook to make it only 10 cars on a lead lap. As Errol Brooks looks to the inside of Ashbrook, as we got two to go, I didn't notice that, so whoa, uh, that's gonna be kind of closer than I expected. As they come to turns three and four, he's gonna put a lap on Ashbrook. And here comes Jim Vandenberg to the inside. But he doesn't make the complete move. Earl Brooks. Oh man, they're trying to wreck each other. Coming up to the white flag. John Sears leading his pack, but it's Bobby Isaac leading the race. But you got Jim Vandenberg there in the back in second who could take this win away from Bobby Isaac. As they're just stuck behind the lap cars, unless they get a run there. There goes Isaac and Vandiver and Haas Ellington, but they don't they don't stay with it. But they do follow Earl Brooks past John Sears. Does Jim Vandiver have anything for Isaac? And does Isaac have enough time to uh, hold his lead? As here comes Vandiver, he's going to the inside. And it's not going to be again, not even in simulation, he can win the race. And Bobby Isaac is going to win in Talladega 500 as Jim Vandenberg scored a second just as in real life. And just as in real life, probably still disappointed. As Bobby Isaac takes the win. And then you got Toss Ellen Haas Ellington third, John Sears lap downs, and you got Jabe Thomas in fourth, A Marcus in fifth, Elmo Langley in sixth, Buck Baker seventh, Dick Brooks seventh, or eighth actually, um, Homer Newland in ninth, and then the 26th car of Earl Brooks just on the lead lap gets 10th as he comes around to complete the race. And that'll be it for this race. We'll see you guys in the next USAC races.